Graffiti is something everyone encounters in their surroundings, especially when living in a city like St. Louis. Some love it, some hate it, others make it. The big question is, is graffiti art or just ugly vandalism? Pete Wolliger is a popular St. Louis artist known for his iconic imagery of an eye that is painted all over the city. Yes, my name is P-E-A-T, Pete Walliger, W-O-L-L-A-E-G-E-R, A-K-A, Eyes, and that's E-Y-E-Z. So I am a internationally known stencil graffiti artist. Um, when I say the word graffiti, some people think, think that's vandalism, uh, but my motivation is to beautify. Um, as you can see behind me, this is some of my work. Um, I'm known for this eye that you see everywhere. Um, and I'm here to awaken the world with eyes. You know, we all have it. You know, I feel like everyone's a uh, creator. You know, we're all born with uh, the gift of art, you know, up until the age of about seven or eight, you know, we're doing art every day and then other things take over in our life, like sports and all that. So I've, I've always uh, been an artist, but the stencil thing started for me uh, after I saw the work of Banksy years ago. Um, and I was, uh, uh, prior to that, I was an illustrator. I did a lot of work for like Campbell cigarettes and Coca-Cola. Um, and I wanted to create some kind of something that was mine. Many famous artists, such as Banksy, have a connection to graffiti. One of the most well-known artists of this status is John Michael Basquiat, whose work was shown at the St. Louis Contemporary Art Museum this past month. This gallery shows the work made by John Michael Basquiat. During the year, he lived with his friend, Alexis Abbey, in a small apartment in the East Village. This provides a rare look into Basquiat's art before he was recognized prominent painter in the early 1980s. Basquiat let out his creativity through his Samo tags in the surrounding neighborhood. He initially got attention for his street art, which he signed as Samo. He covered the entire Lower East Side neighborhood of Manhattan with his work. He's now a world-renowned and highly respected artist. Here you can see a variation of the Samo tag on the St. Louis graffiti. I know a lot about it, you know, I, again, when I was living in Chicago when they did the first one, she back in like 98 was the first Paint Lewis, and if you all don't know, or if your viewers who are watching yeah, this don't know, it's, um, you know, we have the second largest graffiti wall in the world. I mean, it's the flood wall that runs right, right, right along the river, right south of the arch. It's almost two miles long. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the initial Paint Lewis, I think went from like 98 to about 2002, and I'm not totally sure on those dates, but by the last year, that, that uh, Paint Lewis had gotten so huge that people coming from California who had finally made it here, they didn't have enough room to paint on that wall. And I'm talking two mile long wall, so you're like, oh wow. So what those people started doing is they're like, what, we can't paint? They wrecked our city. They went over, tagged everything, St. Louis put the kaputs on St. Louis. So it ended around 2002, uh, and then it rebirthed, I'd say, wow, like maybe 2012, maybe, something like that. So St. Louis now is primary graffiti crews. If you guys don't know what graffiti crews are, it's like you see, uh, for instance, a local graffiti crew in St. Louis is called the LD crew. You know, so if you ever seen LD, it's yeah. a group of like, uh, you know, I think, Who's in that? Like Sabbath, um, I think I follow Do Ray. Like yeah, you probably do. Oh There's a crew of like maybe, I don't know. And I think they have. I think it's motives. You know, like there's a traditionally graffiti, you know, started in the New York and the, well, I think actually started in Philadelphia. But anyway, it was people like, you know, pretty much tagging their name or the, the name that they've come up with. You know, my, my name is E-Y-E-Z, um, which I've tagged that a few times, but um, I don't know. I feel like it's, uh, you know, I can't judge people who just straight up vandalize buildings because, you know, I was at a point in my life that I might have done some of those things, you know, and 
Uh, but I'm definitely, um, I'm a dad now, I have kids, and uh, I think when you become a father and you also kind of look, look at the world a little bit different, like, um, you know, I eventually want to make, I'm trying to make this world a better place for them, you know, and ultimately you guys and everybody else, you know, and we're so uh, enamored with advertisements nowadays, you know, you have billboards everywhere that are legal, and, you know, what am I to say that, you know, someone who goes tags a building is legal, you know, I mean, that's, that's our laws, but, uh, you know, again, my motivation is to beautify, not to vandalize, and I think there's a big difference, you know. To answer your question, the difference between graffiti and street art, um, I believe one of the very first street artists is a guy by the name of Keith Haring, um, and if you all aren't familiar with Keith Haring, um, I'm a massive fan, he was the artist that inspired me to do I might have some of his work on my laptop. But anyway, his icon is like a crawling baby. It's very simply drawn. Um, and the way he got his start in the streets was in New York City um, during the time when people were tagging up trains, doing big bubble, like wild style letters. He pairing would go down into the subways and he'd find the, um, where the billboards or the advertisings were. Well, the advertising companies would put a black piece of paper over the ads that had expired. And so Keith would go down there in his hand style and do these like almost aboriginal type drawings out of chalk. And, you know, police officers would stop and be like, what are you doing tagging? And he's like, dude, it's chalk, it's removable. So he kind of got away with it. And I felt like he birthed a new genre of art called street art. And you now we're very familiar with it. You see people like Shepard Ferry again, who does the Obey Giant. He tag he stuff, or you see artists by the name of Swoon, S-W-O-O-N, she's one of my favorite, favorite female artists uh, on the street, um, who else, I mean there's a ton of, like it's the new wave of, of uh, I think art on the street's called street art, so I feel like we share that. Cool. To conclude, graffiti can most definitely be art, but it all depends on the intent behind each individual piece or tag. Some incredibly famous artists have made a name for themselves through their graffiti art.